What's good, Commanders fans? Today's episode is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. Make sure you guys check them out. But um, before BetUS, you guys saw the video of Jaden Daniels connecting with Terry McLaurin. A beautiful, beautiful pass like he just dropped in the bucket or basically like he just threw the ball and handed it off to Terry McLaurin. So that is the connection that we are looking forward to for many, 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 many years to come. You see Terry smiling in the camera. He's like, hey, hey, I, I think we found our guy. I think we found our guy. So it is very, very early. So it's hard not to get excited. Brandon Coleman, we heard a lot of good things about Brandon Coleman today. People calling him a stud, saying that, they, that we found our guy. I'll get to some of the tweets uh, about Brandon Coleman as well. So, I mean, finding a franchise quarterback and a franchise left tackle in one draft would just be magic and wizardry by Adam Peters if he does something like that, which is which it sounds like it's very, very, very possible. It sounds like it's very, very possible. So like I said, I don't want to get hyped up off of training camp practices and clips and whatnot, but it's very hard to. And, you know, I have in the past and learned my lesson, but, you know, I'm just going to be optimistic and just stay cautiously optimistic for sure. All right, so let's get to some of the play by play, by play and then um, I guess we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the comments that Dan Quinn had to say today. Um, but yeah, let's start off with uh, punt returners today per Zach Selby was uh, Jameson Crowder, Casimir Allen, Jahan Dotson, and Emmanuel Forbes. So only four guys, you know, Dax Mill used to do it or he was doing it and um, Demir Bird was doing it, but they're both, they both were released yesterday. So I guess that's why it's only really four. I think Crowder is going to be the guy who uh, emerges as the punt returner and should be, you know, I think he did a really darn good job last year. I keep saying the thing over and over. When was the last time we saw a touchdown by a punt returner? And the last time we saw a touchdown by a punt returner was when Jameson Crowder was the punt returner back in 2016, 2015. All right. Um, Linnell Willingham says Brandon Coleman with a good one-on-one -on -one rep versus Cleveland Farrell. Cleveland Farrell has been in the league for a couple of years. So that's awesome to hear about Brandon Coleman doing that. Um, Dan Quinn did say that they, they wanted to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one work today. They did one-on-one -on -one work with the receivers versus the DBs. We know that drill is an advantage for the wide receivers. So, you know, can't get too hyped up about, you know, guys cook a, a DB on one-on-ones. But they're just, it's something to do and uh, help the DBs get better with their footwork and turning their hips, flipping the hips, different things like that. And just wide receivers working on their footwork and, and route running. But, you know, it is an advantage for the wide receiver for sure. All right. Um, finally getting some wide receiver DB versus DB one-on-ones. McLaurin beats Emmanuel Forrest off the line, but pass misses. McCaffrey beats Mike Sanders still to the outside. Nice grab. Uh, and that's what J.P. Finlay tweeted out. Uh, Brandon Coleman and Sam Cosme were undefeated in the offensive line versus defensive line one-on-ones. Cosme and John Allen getting a little chippy. I like that a lot. A big year coming up for Sam Cosme. Sam Cosme had a good year last year, so we'll see what happens with that. I think he'll have another good year again. And then Brandon Coleman going up against guys like Dante Fowler, um, Dorrance Armstrong. So Brandon Coleman was really, really holding his own. For him to be undefeated in one on ones is great to see. I mean, third round picks, like we had, um, who was the third? Jerron Christian, who never touched the field. I don't even think he played in one game. Like I may be mistaken, but that's the third round picks that we've kind of gotten up with the office line. Then we drafted Brandon Daniels in the fourth round. We haven't seen him touch the field at all. He might not even make the roster. So to find a franchise left tackle in the third round would be remarkable. It really would be. And it would kind of save us from the sting of passing on Christian Darisaw in the first round and taking Jamin Davis. No, no knock on Jamin Davis, but, you know, we, we definitely should have taken a left tackle, you know, in years past, and Ron Rivera just didn't do it, you know. So, uh, but Brandon Coleman, if, if he really does turn out to be a legitimate starter in this league, like, that would be a steal for sure in the third round. Uh, Zach Selby says, Jaden Daniels with, with the first team in his first pass is a catch by Terry McLaurin working against Ben St. Juice. Uh, ben St. Juice, was, uh, he did miss a little bit of practice the other day. Uh, he was back at outside corner during team drills. Uh, Jaden Daniels has done an excellent job flipping his hips slash shoulders on these rollouts. That's the reason why he's so accurate per Linnell Willingham. We know Jaden Daniels can throw on a run, did a lot in college, did a lot that, that uh, last year where he won the Heisman. So that's going to be where he really is going to be dangerous. And that's why opposing GM said that they're scared to death of what he can do or what he can be capable of, of doing. Zach Selby also says Austin Eckler sprints forward for a nice game. Can't wait to see him in a game scenario. I'm excited to see Austin Eckler and B-Rob together. I really am. That's going to be a nasty, nasty one-two punch. Uh, another good thing for Brandon Coleman. 
Uh, JP Finley says, good dose of run game in 11 versus 11 today. Brandon Coleman looking good. If he can be nasty in that run game, too, for B-Rob and Eckler, man, that's going to be a, a super, super plus. Uh, Lou McCaffrey getting in the mix, man. He's a tough guy on a run block. He took safety Tyler Owens to the ground clean. The two guys dapped up after. So Luke McCaffrey out there pancaking people. You know, he, you know, the Niners, they had a lot of strong blocking wide receivers. And then Adam Peters looks like it looks like he's looking for that too. He's getting that. And Luke McCaffrey, where, you know, not, it's not only about catching passes, you got to be out there and run block too. So Luke McCaffrey's a guy that not afraid, not afraid to put guys in the dirt for sure, it looks like. It's awesome. Tyler, Tyler Owens, that's the guy who's the athletic freak too, that uh Luke McCaffrey put in the dirt. And pancaked him. Uh, another deep ball from Jane Daniels to Terry McLaurin for a touchdown. And of course, the crowd cheers and chants Terry's name. So that's the one that I'm assuming that was that was the, that the clip was about um, that I showed in the beginning. And Braden Daniels working a left tackle per Lionel Willingham. So we get a Braden Daniels sighting. Will he make the roster? We'll see. Uh, Cole Turner made a big catch over the middle. Who had who has had a good camp? Like if I if it was up to me between Cole Turner and Amarni Rogers, it's a tough one for me. Honestly, it really is. Like. I can see I can see I can see Cole Turner not making a roster and Amarni not and Amarni Rogers not making a roster because it's gonna be Zachers, Ben Sennett, and John Bates. Because John Bates is a better blocking tight end, so I think he's gonna make the roster. So I mean if they keep three, I'm I'm fine with them keeping only three tight ends. I don't think it's necessarily always keep like four or five tight ends. But um if they keep if they have the, if they keep four and they decide between Cole and Armani, I think that's just it's gonna be up to the preseason. Cole Turner had a really good preseason last year, though. That was that was the that was the disappointing thing. Like him and Sam Howe had a really good connection, had really had really good chemistry, and then we just didn't see that at all during the regular season. All right, we're gonna talk a little bit more about McLaurin, but once again, I want to give a quick shout out to Bet US. Make sure you guys check them out. Uh, one hundred twenty-five. They have one hundred twenty-five percent sign-up bonus up to two thousand dollars. You can use my link down below in the description. Fast and easy deposit and withdrawal process. Uh, live wagering on all major games. You know, the NFL season is coming. It's, it's tonight, the Hall of Fame game. Hall of Fame game. Get 10% back on your net losses twice a year as well. Make sure you guys check out my BetUS link down below and use that to sign up so you guys can take advantage of that 125% sign-up bonus. So let's look at the Hall of Fame game tonight. Some pro some um, stuff that you can wager on tonight. Money line. They got the Texans money line. The Texans, it, this one is a tough one, so bet at your own risk on this one. Like the guys that are playing quarterback is uh, Davis Mills and uh, Case Keenum is going to be playing tonight. Tyson Bagent for the Bears. Rushing uh, is going to be like Damian Pierce, Demetric Felton, who I like a lot of Cam Akers. But personally, I would take the over. I don't know about the money line on this game, like who's going to win or not. But I, I like the over, over 31. I feel like they can get over 31 points. So I would take the over on bet on, on bet US. Use my link down below and you guys can take advantage of that uh sign up bonus for sure shout out to bet us all right um let's get to some more of the play-by-play -play here cornelius lucas is out today for personal reasons excuse apis absence per the team brandon coleman and trent St trent scott at tackles at tackle with the ones so trent scott was with the ones and brandon coleman was with the ones i don't know what they're doing andrew wiley i don't know if they're going to release him or what's really going on with the whole tightness thing like i don't think they're going to release him i was looking at his contract they have a potential out after this season so it would be more wise for them to release Andrew Wiley after this season cap wise and cap space wise I don't see them releasing him and then you can't really trade him I don't think there's any value for him trading him so I, I don't know what's going on with Andrew Wiley man I, I guess I, I, we'll see we'll see you know that's all I'm gonna say about Andrew Wiley um big play alert 11s McLaurin beats Forbes immediately off the line Daniel sees and leaps and leads him deep Football is their touchdown. I think that's the same play as well. Um, Armani Rogers made two ac acrobatic catches during one on ones versus the linebackers and the safeties. So Armani Rogers making some noise there. Um, and then Linnell says, uh, nice sequence here. Eckler does a nice job in pass row versus Bobby Wagner. Jaden Daniels deep shot to Terry McLaurin for a touchdown. I think that I think that might be the same play. Just every beat reporter was tweeting about that same play. And then Linnell also says Jaden Daniels off of pl play action finds Ertz, Zach Ertz for a nice gain on a crosser. Zach Ertz making some noise. And then Linnell also says, nice job by Nick Allegretti and Coleman pa passing off a stunt. So Brandon Coleman, man, it looks like he had an A-plus day. Looked like this was probably his best, best day so far in practice, uh, in training camp. Uh, Julian Good-Jones with multiple bad snaps. He's been pulled each time. He probably is going to be released pretty soon. We'll see. And then um, Linnell says, Brandon Coleman right now looks like a day one starter at left tackle. Not a surprise for a third-round pick to start. 
But here recently with this organization, Rare, they've got a good one. So like I said before, you know, Brandon, Braden Daniels, Jerron Christian have been the tackles that we have drafted recently. So to get a day one starter at a, le at a left tackle for for Brandon Coleman would would be it would be a, 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 a it would be awesome it would be awesome I'll just say that all right um and then John Cobb also says Andrew Wiley hasn't done any full work or one on ones working now on the field goal blocking sat out drills the other day with tightness so they they got him in the I don't I wouldn't call it, I don't know I'm gonna call this the doghouse but they got him working on field goal blocking and he wasn't even doing one-on-one. -on -one. So I guess they're trying to preserve him, but you know, we'll wait and see what happens with Andrew Wiley. Uh, let's get to the Washington kicker situation. Ramiz Ahmed was five for five. Riley Patterson was five for five. They went, they made kicks from 27 yards away, 33 yards away, 37 yards away, 47 yards away, and 53 yards away. And uh, so the competition goes on. We just got to see what happens in preseason with the, with the, with the kickers. Um, and then on one-on-ones per Felix Trammell, Cosby destroyed John Allen. Chris Paul also looked good in one-on-ones. And then he also said Brandon Coleman is a stud. So everybody was impressed with, with Brandon Coleman today. And then Mitch Tischler said Brandon Coleman was the standout in these one-on-one -on -one drills, showed good feet, strength, and ability to recover as well. So, uh, Brandon Coleman won the day. Jaden Daniels, those two guys. Jaden Daniels and Brandon Coleman, they stole the day. They they were the stars of today. Quickly, uh, John, John Connor says that Dan Quinn said Jamin Davis will get some work at first and second down. And linebacker said that was always the plan, so he doesn't get too far from what he needs to do at that spot. But we'll still a still stay, but we'll stay as a defensive end on third down situations. So once again, we'll see what happens with that. Does he make the roster? And um, how 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 how, he, how does he do at the edge rushing spot? It's a hard. It's not easy to transition from linebacker to edge rusher a couple months before the season. Like it's just not easy for him at all. It's not easy for anybody. So we'll see how that works out. And then uh, Dan Quinn said Deami Brown has jumped out to him in specific areas, highlighted when quarterbacks get out of the pocket to extend plays. Deami Brown's ability to accelerate and get open has been very, very important. So Deami Brown, I got him making a roster. Like I'm not, I'm not gung ho on him making a roster, but. This is it. Like, this is the last year. This is a make or break year for him. Like, we cannot have 10 catches, 12 catches for 100 yards on a season. Like, that's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. Like, he, he I, I feel like he's more talented than that. The only player I can really remember, remember is the Seahawks game. And then two years ago with Carson Wentz, the Titans game. And that's really it. That's really it. All right, you guys. You guys let me know what you guys think. And then tomorrow we'll revisit our bet US pick for the over on 31 points. We'll talk about that pretty quick. Hopefully we make some money on that. Health and Commanders. Peace.